was running from the life I lived I tried hard to forget I was running from the things I'd done I wish I'd never did After all that I'd been through Yes, I was running running we're always busy but what are you pursuing what are you running after think about that we want more of God amen If you 
walk in freedom And if you bear his name We'll sing the song forever to the Lamb We'll sing the song forever and amen For the angels cry Holy and all creation cries Holy, you were lifted high Holy, holy forever Hear your people sing Holy, and to the King of Kings Holy, and you will always be Holy, holy forever Your name is the highest Bye. 
he's worthy folks give him a hand clap of praise this morning the Holy Spirit is moving let him work in your life this morning Amen. because he is the way maker Amen. he's a way maker let me tell you what there's been a many time in my life where I lost my way I mentioned the Sunday school class this morning and yeah you can call it Sunday school class I still do I lost my way many times you say oh Perry Smith's son he's got it all together no 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 let me tell you what, my heart's been broken because I lost my way. Have I had difficulties in my marriage? Yes. But praise the Lord, he saw us through it when we found the way. And we had financial problems in our lives. Yes, but he gave me restitution. He gave me salvation. He gave me guidance and he gave me a way. Have I had enemies in my life? Yes, I do today because he said there will be those that hate me. But you know what? He provided me a way, and that's Jesus Christ. And there's some of you this morning who walked in here this morning, you feel like there is no way for me to get out of the mess I'm in. And let me tell you what. He's here. And all you need to do is come and get on your face before him, the Heavenly Father. He's going to restore you. He's going to give you faith. He's going to give you the strength you need because he is our way maker. And praise God for him this morning. We raise a hallelujah to him. But I want you to know something. If you need him this morning, this is the appointed time for you this day. This very day for you to receive salvation in this place, this holy place of God. The Holy Spirit is moving. Let him indwell you. Let him be a part of your life so he can show you the way. Oh,
Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the purpose of your word, Lord, to us. We thank you, Lord, for releasing your word to us with the opportunity, Lord, to share in the freedom that we have, Lord, in this nation. Lord, that you would move us to action, just as Pastor Frankie was talking about, it's, it matters. Lord, that you would move us to action to say, at your word, I will. Lord, cause us to answer, Lord, at your word, I will. And we thank you, Lord, for your calling and your gifting on each and every individual in this room. I thank you, Lord, that you've handcrafted every individual as a potter, crafts clay, Lord, to be the image to bear your name in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, move right now, Father. Lord, we pray, Father, that your word would be illuminated by your spirit. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Amen. Y'all ready? You ready to say amen? Luke chapter 5, please, uh, 1 through 11. Luke chapter 5, 1 through 11. I've had this on my heart. You know, God gives things uh, at times, and you don't know when they're for, but you know they're for, and uh, you pray and you pray, and uh, the opportunity has come up, and so the Lord just would not let me go of this. I would... I would go and read and study, and the Lord would just keep reminding me of something. And there's something in the, in the Bible called the rhema word. Who's heard of the word rhema before? Rhema, rhema is the spoken word of God. It's the voice that takes action. It's not the written word. The written word is logos. Logos in the Greek. But rhema is spirit-inspired word. Amen? There is nothing in the Logos, there is nothing in the writing of God that wasn't meant to take action in the Spirit. Did you hear that? There's nothing in the writing, in the Logos, that wasn't meant to take action in the Spirit. So we have to have the spiritual impartation of the Word, amen? We have to have the Rhema Word of God. And so in Luke chapter 5, we're going to be... In verses 1 through 11, there's this story of a man named Simon Peter. And Simon Peter was not without fault. Amen. And uh, I've heard preachers talk about how much he talked and, and, uh, and how quick he put his foot in his mouth and all these different things. But in, with all of those problems and with all of those faults, Jesus chose Simon Peter be the, to be the captain of the apostles. And so there's something about Peter that was a key to why God said, you are Simon the Reed, but you're going to be the rock. And if you were upstairs in youth this morning, you know what that means, right? But we're called to not be Simons that are washed like the reed, but we're called to be rocks of faith, that were planted in the rock of faith, in Him, in Jesus, in His Word, that His Word being rhema is something that is a spiritual life that we can depend on that we can build on amen and so in luke 5 1 it says so it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of god that he stood by that's jesus stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon. It was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from land. And he, saw, he sat and he taught the multitudes from the boat. So we see Jesus, and he does an odd thing, and he says, Can I, can I step into your boat? 
He gets into the boat. He already knows Simon. We know that he knows Simon from John chapter 1, where Andrew leads Simon Peter to Jesus. And so, make note of this. There's a time when we can come to know God, and we can come to meet God, and then there is a time of calling. And everyone that comes to God must know that you have a calling and a purpose in the kingdom of God. You don't come to know God and get to sit idle. It's not a part of His plan. Everybody has gifts and callings. Romans 11.29. Does that sound familiar, youth? Romans 11.29. It says, All the gifts and callings of God are ear." Revocable. Man can take your license away if you get too many speeding tickets, but they can't take your calling away. And God has set in motion that He will not take the gifts and callings of God. That was a letter to the people of Israel that had cast Jesus away. And Paul says they're irrevocable. Faith is, gives us access into the gifts and callings of God. And so Jesus gets into Simon's boat. And he's already met him. But Simon is not following Jesus yet. He's met him. He knows him. He knows his face. He knows his voice. He's acquainted with him. And some of us are acquainted with Jesus, but we don't know him. And what I mean by that is, I mean John 7... 3 says this is eternal life that you may know the one true God in whom he has sent that you may know that you may have personal knowledge of intimate knowledge of and he says Jesus says to Simon he says when he had stopped speaking he said to Simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch Jesus says to Simon, a professional fisherman, go out to the deep and let down your nets. How many of us have ever lived a life thinking we have the best options and we have all the best ideas and we've, we've done it all before and we know how it works? I just want to ask you some questions. Will you let Christ step into your boat? Will you let God lead your life? Will you let the Lord define your success? Will you give Him your thoughts? Will you give Him your anger? Will you give Him your finances? Will you give Him your children? Will you give Him your time? Will you give him your politics? Will you give him your conveniences? You see, these are things that when Christ steps into your boat, he asks you to do. There's more to the Christian life than just, well, I don't drink alcohol anymore, and I don't smoke this or that anymore, and I don't do that anymore, and I'm a fairly good person. But there's more to the callings and gifts of God than just I don't. Christians are called to do, doers of the word and not hearers only, amen? So the rhema word has to be the spoken word of God that takes action into our life, that sets us on a course of action. And so Simon, he said, I'm not just calling you to hear what I'm saying, I'm calling you to launch out into the deep, into the deep and let down your nets. But Simon answered and he said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing nevertheless at your word I'll let down the net a professional fisherman who fishes all night long and catches what? nothing Jesus said in John 15 apart from me you can do nothing and so we need spiritual impartation of his word where we've tried to do this and we've tried to do that and I've tried to make success and they call me a professional fisherman but I have no fish 
and I've been doing this my whole life, and, and I've been doing it the, the best I can do, but I have nothing to show for it. How many of you have been there? And it's because we need spiritual rhema word to release power of God on the earth. <clears throat> he said, we've caught nothing, but nevertheless... At your word, I will let down the net. What if our answer today is just simply that? At your word, I'll let down the net. You can step into my boat and you can take my life. And I don't know where this boat's going. It's going out to the deep. And I don't know how far you want to go. But you can take my boat. And we'll drop the net because I'm following after you. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the boat, filled both the boats so that they began to sink. That's called supernatural encounter with God. God is not just a God that sits in heaven and watches us toil and suffer and spin and isn't interested in our daily activity of living. He wants our thoughts. He wants our time. He wants our conveniences. But He's not a God that leaves us to suffer without reward. And the reward is always Him first. Notice it was Simon had to have Jesus in the boat before he caught anything that day. And maybe the creator of the, wor of the world that spoke the world into motion, that spoke light into darkness, said, you know what? Last night, I'm just not going to let the fish bite. Fish aren't biting today. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into the boat first. We live in a culture where suffering is not popular and suffering is not desired. 1 Peter 5.10 It says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. What was Peter's night of fishing? It was suffering suffering on his own and here's the options guys we have we have two options we have trials and tribulations and we have suffering with God or we have trials and tribulations and suffering without God who on the earth is suffering everyone we're living in a fallen world so there's suffering on the earth because of sin and death and so we have the option we can suffer with him by all grace who called you into his eternal glory. And so there has to be a place just like Peter that says, I was called into the glory of God for a greater purpose. We're going to find out. We're going to read that. Back to Luke 5. It says that the nets begin to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. It says, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. It's called abundance. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me. I am a sinful man, O Lord. How do we know that this was a spiritual encounter? Because of that testimony right there. It was, it was so much more about fish. And this life is so much more about our conveniences and our time and the, the success that we try to build. And the simplistic little things that seem to get in our way. I heard a preacher say once, we go so fast and we go so hard to, to go absolutely nowhere. And it's so true. Because we do it on our own. And we do it apart from him. 
And he says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. There was so much more in that encounter about God than about the fish. The word of God says it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Yes, hell's a real place. Yes, people are going there. And yes, every three seconds, somebody crosses over into there. But it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. That means that when God in all of his goodness created a hell for Satan and his angels, and by proxy people go there because they're not, they haven't come into the knowledge of God and they haven't come into faith that saves them, into Christ through the work of the cross by his work only because of his righteous hand that dipped down into the pit and pulled us out in Psalms 40 that they go there because of unbelief and because of the sin of curse of sin and death it says verse 9 for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken And so also were James and John and the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. From now on, you will catch men. Matthew 4.19 says, Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men you see so God's calling on Peter Peter's plan was to catch fish that's what he did he was a fisherman and Peter thought his calling was to catch fish but all the while God says I want you to I do want you to be a fisher I do want you to go fishing but I want you to catch men and how do we catch men church how do we catch men how do we catch people It's the love of God that draws many. Men don't enter ministry because I didn't. And I know Frankie didn't. We don't enter enter ministry as as a job, as a job description, as a thing to check off the list. You enter ministry by the abundance of, of life that flows in you, through you, and out of you. And it the, it's the only thing that you can do. And when you said yes to Jesus, not when you just met him, but when you said, I want to surrender and I want to follow you, you say yes to ministry. Y'all awake this morning? Luke nine twenty three. This is a hard one. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will in fact lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake will save it. I ask you again, will you let Christ step in your boat? Will you put down your nets? Sometimes I think we let Christ step into our boat and just be here with us while we're fishing. We'll stay comfortable. We'll do our thing. We know how to fish. We'll do that. Don't tell us where to put down our nets. Me and my wife didn't plan to drive eight hours away from home to live life it just wasn't in the plans I never said I never woke up one morning and said hey let's let's just move to Texas let's just do that we love it here and it's awesome but there's something more than that there has to be nets we have to let down our nets We're called to be fishers of men. And sometimes we think, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and 
and follow me. We use that verse, and I've, I don't know how many times I've said it upstairs, but we use that verse to young people, and we think we're talking about alcohol and smoking weed and sex before marriage and all of these things. But I don't think that's just what Jesus was talking about. I think Jesus was talking about the times that we overlook the anger that we get over the smallest of things. The offense and the, the hurt that we get over the smallest of word that's maybe taken the wrong way. And if we get a, well, if that comes to life in us, and we deny ourselves all of those emotions and all of those thoughts. Is it healthy to understand that Jesus never had those? I mean, Jesus, you know, you don't hear it in the, in the verse where it says, and he turned around and got mad because they whipped him the 49th time. He took it. He denied himself. And we'll overlook frustrations and we'll call it humanity. But we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away. All things new. Those are old emotions. Those are old thought patterns. Those are old wheels. This scripture verse right here is uh, Colossians 3. Four. Colossians 3 verse 4 when Christ who is our life appears who is our life appears then you will appear with him in glory Christ isn't a ticket into heaven he's our life it's the only way to define him Simon Peter had to understand it's how I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live my life by the direction of his rhema word. From now on, I'm going to live my life directed by his voice. I'm going to put down my nets when he says put them down. You know, the teaching about that boat that, that Simon Peter was in is that it was like this big. It was like six feet wide. So when Jesus says put down your nets and they catch nothing all night long and they go back out into the deep it's not like there was this mass physical change it was supernatural change and we need supernatural change in our life we need rhema word to be spirit we we have to take the word that we we read these bible stories i know we've read this story before we read them to kids and we love them but I love them not because they're just good, familiar stories. I, I love them because it's life. Does the Word of God infect or affect your daily process? Does the Word of God infect your daily process? If the Word of God does not affect my daily process... It's not the rhema word of God. And we can live by logos word. We can live by written word. We can get up in the morning, and I love devotionals. We can get up in the morning and read a 10-minute devotional. But if it doesn't infect my life, it's just words. There was something about Peter's life that was different after he let down the nets. There was something about him that was a different man. He saw his depravity. He saw his problems. He saw his sin for what it was because it's not the sin of the day-to-day -day actions that he was doing. It wasn't the drinking that was the, the major root of the problem. The major root of the problem was, I'm trying to do this on my own. Psalms 119, 105. Sure, you've read this to your kids? I know I've read it to your kids. 
Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, technology has changed a little bit, but used to, we could use the example that the light is only good as if you turned it on. But now, you just walk in a room, the light comes on. So I can't use that example anymore. But a lamp has to be turned on. And a lamp that that's talking about has oil in it. Not oil, oil. That's how you say it. That's how you say it in Texas. That's how you say it in Tennessee. It's just the way it is. It's oil. Amen? So the word brings light, but the word is only good if the spirit is there. The spirit has to be there. The word has to lead to spiritual change. The word has to lead to spiritual life. When we surrender to Jesus, we put, he puts in his desires and gives us his ability to accomplish. When we surrender to Jesus, he puts in his desires and gives us his ability to accomplish. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15 If you want to uh, make a daily devotion of your own, since there's only 50 billion of them out there on the Bible app, but if you want to make your own daily devotion, just get up in the morning and start reading through the book of Ephesians because the book of Ephesians is like a lightning bolt of identity for your daily living. And so Ephesians 3.15, it says, To know the love of God which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with, with all the fullness of God. How are you filled by the Spirit of God? I personally preach all the gifts of the Spirit. I know Pastor Frankie does. All the the works of miracles, all for today. That's what we preach. But how are you filled with the Spirit of God? How you're filled with the Spirit of God is is Ephesians 3.15. To be full of to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that I might be filled with the fullness of God. How do we get filled with the Spirit of God? Get full of the love of God. Get an understanding of the thing that's un- understandable. It's uncomprehendable. That Christ, when we were sinners, made us right before Him. That the mercy of God in Romans 5, that the mercy of God reached down in the midst of my most sinful place. Like Peter said, depart from me for I'm a sinful man. And it was the mercy of God that said, Jesus' response to Simon Peter's depart from me was what? Just come, follow me. (laughs) That's how good God is. That's his response. And it's always his response. We never enter the kingdom ready to be made right. I need to say that again. We never enter the kingdom of God ready to be made right before we come to Christ. Christ makes us righteous. It's Christ's work. There is no one righteous. There was no one who does good. We come to God with our mess and with our incapabilities, and then in a moment of reality, of experiencing the supernatural love of God, we are changed. And that change leads to further change. Amen? What does it mean to catch men? It means that our life is so full of God that we begin to draw people to us, not for us, for Him, for His glory. Because we're so full of the love of God. That's how we catch men. It's not... Yeah, I mean... We order a lot of pizza in youth. Back in the day, that was like... Youth youth group was like, you know... Three games, a Bible verse, and pizza. But that's not the net. The net is his love. 
How do we figure out how to love him and understand the capacity of his love? It's not how to love people more. It's how to understand the capacity of his love. Because when we get that, it wrecks us and everything we do is full of God. There's two different men. There's Simon and there's Peter in one body. Simon was the reed. Peter was the rock. It's one man, two different identities. One passed away. One became the captain of the apostles and the leader of the New Testament church. But what took place to change Simon to Peter? It had to be a supernatural encounter with the supernatural God and his supernatural love for him. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. What did he say? Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. We need rhema, spiritual word, to release spiritual power, dunamis power. If the written word of God does not become the voice in my head to lead to full wonder-working power, it's not the fullness of what God intended for my life. Did you catch that? If the written word of God does not change me to where I hear the voice of God supernaturally through his written word, it's not the power of God. His word, his written word, leads to his spoken word, which leads to our doing in him. Did I lose y'all? Y'all still out there? Acts 2.41, and this is in closing. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Two different men. You see a man in, um, in Luke 5, you see a man that's living by his own capabilities and by his own actions. In Acts 2.41, you see the same man living by the power of God. In in Luke 5, you see a man who was out there to catch fish. In Acts 2.41, you see a man who was catching men. Let's read it. Then those who gladly received his word... They received his word, but it was really his word. Were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000 souls. 3,000 conversions in a moment of preaching the gospel. Why? Because his word, little h, was his word. And so... There's a supernatural encounter where this is the first sermon ever preached by the man. It's the first time he preached a sermon. 3,000 people get saved. That's supernatural encounter. That's how you catch men. Y'all coming up. Would you please? If y'all stand with me. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your word. I pray, Lord, tonight, uh, this morning, Lord, that you would release your word, that it would pierce our ears even tonight. Lord, that you would do a work in this body. 
Lord, every hand and every foot, every mind, every eye, every mouth, every ear, Lord, that your word would penetrate and begin to change and begin to use for your glory. Lord, each and every individual here has a ministry and a calling if they said yes to you, Jesus. Lord, I pray, Father, that men and women would begin to surrender their life to you, Father, for the work of the gospel. Lord, in whatever context you've given us to fulfill, whatever job, whatever person in Walmart, whatever, whatever you want to do, God, would you use us, Lord? Would we let down our nets, step into our boat and let down our nets for your glory? Lord, we thank you, Father, for your work and your love, Lord, that was paid for on the cross. Lord, so that we could walk in the fullness that we're called to walk. These altars are open. If the Lord's moving on your heart, we just open these altars. They're always open. Would you come? Just come. Sin. Yeah. 